Okay, everyone. Seeking a thread back again. Let's pile up some vids. Um, today I want to discuss the primitive Americana private press scene, which I've discussed some. Um, I have a decent collection of stuff. Um, there's always more to get. Uh, so hopefully shed some light on some interesting ones that you may or may not know. Um, you know, I'm not going to discuss John Fahey or Robbie Basho. I've done two in-depth videos on those, which I'll link to below, showing all of their records. So you can check those out if you haven't seen them already. So they're not in here. The other one that's not in here is Master Wilburn Burchett, who I am also one of two artist features I'm going to be doing coming up. So no Burchett records in here. And of course, all those artists touch on sort of experimental, primitive, and some in some cases psychedelic uh, guitar work. So this is some other stuff. Most of this is original, some reissues. Um, a lot of it sort of mines the same territory, so you're not going to get anything wildly out, out there. We'll try to identify some of that, but most of this is instrumental, some of it's singer-songwriter, but let's just talk about it. This is Tom Smith that we're listening to on Lone Oak Productions, Still Life. As you can hear, quite lovely, nice, very nice cover. Uh, this is from 1978. One of these songs was on the uh, Numero Group compilation, uh, Lonesome... What's it called? Guitar Soli. Uh, but yeah, it's just contemporary guitar, as they like to call it. So that's Tom Smith. Let's get into it. I just finally... Here's, this is a new record for me. I've had the reissue forever. Super thrilled to add this next one to my collection. Original press of Harry Tossig. Fate is only once. This, um, apparently, all the copies that have been sold recently used to be Tossigs, so I'm pretty sure this was his incredibly clean, um, pretty rare one. I've never seen it in person, I had to get this online, but it comes with the original booklet, which has um, sort of all of his uh, talk thoughts and sort of instruction on how to, uh, how to play these songs, fingerings, tunings, keys. So that's really cool. It's in the Tacoma style. Well, this is on the Talisman label. One and only pressing on Talisman. This was almost like an instructional LP, essentially. Um, but also just beautiful. He was compiled on one of the compilations. Well, compilation I'll show in a second. But uh, his one and only record. He would come back later, what, 40 years later, and release a follow-up to this. But this is just stunning if you like Fahey. Tossig is your guy. He's a little more on the eastern side like Basho, but so it's really happy to get an original pressing on Talisman of that. This is another one that this one definitely sort of gets into the cosmic realm. Don Beekoff. This is a reissue. Celestial Explosion on Tompkins Square, who does a lot of the reissues on this stuff. A little bit of a frustrating one on this one is that digging with Angry Mom with George maybe five years ago. We were in a Pennsylvania, and this guy's from Pennsylvania. We were in a, a kind of a store that was essentially like a like a, a trailer park sort of storage container turned into a store where this guy just hung out and just had records everywhere. And it was a store, as in he had pricing in the bins and things, but he had all these dollar records all over the floor. And we'd gone there periodically, and then this one day, we're like, let's go through all the dollar records. And I went through, you know, we pulled out some good stuff, including uh, an original press of this, of course, for a buck, which I was like, I was like almost earmarking for myself, but something happened and in the coming days where I kind of forgot about it or I got sidetracked and I missed it and ended up selling online for a super cheap price that we had put it up for as a, for Angry Mom and I missed it. I should have put it, pulled it aside right there, but I didn't. And now I've never seen, I haven't seen another copy of it, so... But the reissue is nice, and it's great. Beekoff, his one and only record, Don Beekoff, out of Pennsylvania. Celestial Explosion. This one is sort of a singer-songwriter, incredibly rare. Tor um, Toronto-based, Blind Owl. This is a reissue on the Strawberry Rain label. You can get the, This is one of these examples where you can get this for like $10, or you can pay four figures for an original copy. Um, this one, that's a reproduction of the label there. He kind of, um, you have, let's see, acoustic six string bass, harmonica, and xylophone on this. It's a trio, but essentially it's under the Blind Owl moniker. 
Um, some vocals by Tom Smiley and Stuart Colbertson. Essentially a private press folk record. Pretty excellent on the Strawberry Rain label who's done a lot of Zamrock reissues, African and some Psych. Nice one. And what else? Okay, this next one is by another record that was one and only. This is an original pressing. Scott Witte out of Wisconsin. Sailor's Dream. I like this sort of primitive cover, cover art. Uh, this is from 1980, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another one that was featured on that guitar solely comp. I think it's the first track. But we do have some saxophone, some drums on this. Um, some synthesizer from Gary Collinsworth. This is a really cool one, and one I recommend you look, looking up and ch trying out. I think the originals aren't crazy, but have a look on Piggy Rooster. It's kind of in a matte. It's on the shrink, but it's kind of in a matte cover there. Again, a lot of this stuff is similar, so you probably don't need to go too deep on it, but I think there's definitely some good pieces in here to check out, including this one. Here's another one. I would never pay what this goes for original John Delamonte, people like you. More of a singer-songwriter album, but he definitely dips into the Fahey style. Uh, this is a ratio on Sebastian Speaks, who's done some excellent records. Um, I gotta listen to this again, but forget about finding an original. That's a four-figure album, for sure. I think from 71, 72. Nice cover. Here's the comp I was alluding to before. I'm pretty sure I showed this for because I love the cover so much. This is the first pressing of contemporary guitar on Tacoma. With Harry Tossig, of course, John Fahey, Basho, and Bucka White, who put out a record on Tacoma. Max Ox, or Oaks as well. His only appearance, never had an LP, Oaks. This is just, you can find this in another cover, a white cover, and... This is the, in those original Tacoma labels, the black labels. Absolutely stunning. Doesn't, I don't think, some Tacoma stuff has inserts. Does this one? No. I don't think this one ever did. But 1967 Contemporary Guitar, Spring 67. Here's one that's um, an archival record. I don't think I've ever showed it, but it's a soundtrack that never came out to a film called The Hired Hand. Um by Bruce Langhorn, Peter Fonda film from 1969. Absolutely stunning, sparse, um, Americana. Langhorn known for being Mr. Tambourine Man, the guy who I guess was playing with, he recorded with Dylan here and there. And apparently Dylan saw him with a giant tambourine and called him, that's where the song came from. Apparently, that's the story. This is a pressing of on Scissor Tail, one of a thousand, I think they've, reissued this, but absolutely incredible soundtrack by Bruce Langhorn, Hired Hand. Very rich, very sort of bucolic and spacious. you got to really be patient with this one, but it's incredible. I've never seen the film. Peter Fonda. This one I showed or played in the stream, Daniel Hecht, or Daniel Hecht, guitar on Dragon's Egg Productions. This is from 74. There are reissues of this one. And those custom labels here. This one's one of the more wonderful instrumental guitar records I have, for sure. Sweet Mantra, cool one there. Um, yeah. He's got a few other records I don't have. This is kind of the one to have, though, so I'm kind of happy with this. This next one's an odd one, one I have to spin again, by an artist called Gimmer Nicholson. He's known, this is called um, Christopher Ideals, or Idalis. This is known, the original pressing of this is on the um, Peabody label, which is the label that put out um, Alex Children's first solo album in the US, White Flies on Sherbet, which if you have, I know, wow, uh, Chris Kibler. Amazing that you have a copy of that. That one is going, they're asking close to a grand for that record now. In any case, this record is also on Peabody, the original, and not a cheap one. Um, 
cool one. I gotta spin this again. This was given to me as a gift, so it needs another spin. Here's a UK singer-songwriter, Gordon Giltrap. He would go on to do other stuff. It was, I'm forgetting the name of the bands he would go into, but it's a UK pressing on Transatlantic. Uh, portrait, Gordon Giltrap. Nice, um, you know, sort of John Renborn style record here. And again, a singer-songwriter, so there's vocals on this, not necessarily the instrumental style, but definitely that is there. Very accomplished, beautiful, um, you know, technique by uh, Gordon Giltrap. So this one is on a different sort of guitar. William Eaton, he's playing with like a lute. And this is called, um, just music by William Eaton, yeah. Incredible cover. This was reissued by uh, Morning Trip, the label I've been discussing. But this is the uh, original. I got this for such a cheap deal. Because the top is like that, but it presents so beautifully. And the record's clean. Incredible stuff. Very transcendent. This one sort of goes into like an early New Age territory. I know Chris Cole loves this one. William Eaton. A couple more. Grassroots Guitar by George Cromarty on Thistle. He's got a few others that are not very interesting. This is a cool one to grab though. From 1973. You can get this for like 20 bucks, the original. Love this cover. Sitting in the grass fields there. Um, original on, I said that, Thistle. The Thistle label. I'm always looking for more of this stuff. If anyone knows, anyone's got any instrumental, acoustic, guitar, music. I don't know if this has been reissued. It probably hasn't because it's a pretty cheap original. But the he was out of, I think, California. Yeah. George Cromarty. And I'll show one more. And then I'm going to have you uh, check out the John Fee and Robbie Basho videos and look for my look for my um, Burchette video, which I'm excited to do. This one is on Stormy Forest, Richie Haven's label. Bob Brown. Two records. The Wall I Built Myself. This is the better of the two, I think. These, this is a good example. Kind of cheap. Pretty cheap anyway. Should be 15 to 20 bucks for this. Uh, from 69, I think it is. Uh, Stormy Forest. Some cool records on that label, the Richie Havens label. This is um, very much in the Neil Young style. He likes to use a lot of falsetto in his singing. Uh, Bob Brown. It's sort of hard to find, too, with a name like Bob Brown, but there's the uh, Stormy Forest labels. The other record is good. I think it's called Wallaby something, which I do have. But I like this one. It's, again, pretty lovely, pretty, um, you know, a lot of patience to his songwriting, you know, sort of things stretch out and sort of free flowing. Pretty gentle album. Sort of psychedelic in its feel, but not in its sort of effects, use of effects or anything. Bob Brown, The Walls I Built Myself. The Wall I Built Myself. That's it. These are records I was pulling out to sort of re examine. You know, I was just thinking about doing this Master Wilburn Burchette video, which will be interesting. And so I wanted to show those. That's it. Again, we've been listening to Tom Smith's Still Life on Lone Oak Productions, 1978. Year of my birth. All right, hope you enjoyed that little uh, video on Guitar Soli, Primitive Americana, and Private Presses. Um, that's all I got for you. See ya.